All right, so here, Jinji is playing black, so uh, he's playing James Tarjan. I always liked Tarjan. I, it may be pronounced Tarjan, but uh, he's an American, so Tarjan. And he became a GM in um, 1976, so uh, I had just been playing chess for a few years by that time. And, uh, you know, I liked his name because it sounded like Tarzan, and so... Every time I'd see a game of his, I'd go, Oh! <laughs> and as a kid, I was just a crazy... I just, I liked him for whatever reason. I, I liked Tarjan, and I liked Sirawan. You know, I, it basically, if they were flying a U.S. flag, I liked them. Anyway. D4, we have an Indian game. East Indian. Now this is the Nimzo Indian. The normal line. And this is uh, Robert Hubner's variation. Bishop d3. Knight c6. Um, oops. What? Oh, I see. If I do that, if I hover over it, it um, bleeds into the screen. So knight c6, um, knight f3. Uh, do you guys like the look of this, by the way? I, I've been tinkering with different looks for the uh, move window. And I wanted some contrast between the moves and the comments. How do you guys like that look? Bishop takes knight check. Pawn takes d6. We're in the main line of the Hubner variation. e4. e5. d5. And knight e7 was the last move in this game that was played in the e41 line. Uh, so let's switch to the database and see what we got here. <clears throat> so knight to h4. H6 and f4 which was easy to predict with knight to h4. Does anybody out there want to tell me how you like the move list look? Knight g6, knight takes knight, and pawn takes knight. We have a kingside castle and a kingside castle. All the top moves in the database being played so far. But now we're starting to get down to the nitty gritty. We only have about uh, less than 60 games in the database here. Um, 23 of which f5 was played, but here, queen to e1. And now bishop, rather than queen to e7, bishop to d7, and queen to g3 brings us <clears throat> to a unique position in the database at move 15. Now we can evaluate the position here. And we see a half open file. So the B file might be appealing to both Queen's Rooks. Um, White does enjoy the bishop pair, but his king's bishop is kind of uh, boxed in by his own pawns. <clears throat> and of course we have some weakness here. All in all, fairly equal position. <clears throat> Queen to 
Queen e8. Pawn to f5. And pawn to uh, g5. Queen to h3. And queen to h5. Not looking for a queen trade. Tarjan plays queen to e3. Pawn to a6. And pawn to a6 signals black's intention to play b5. Of course, a lot of times a rook will get behind before that push is made, but nonetheless, in view of a6, white might have wanted to play a4 to try to put a stopper on this move. Of course, if he plays here, a takes b5, and if a takes b5, the rook has to trade itself off because the bishop is still obstructing any defense. But after that, c takes uh, b5, sorry, c takes b5, and white has created a pass pawn and looking pretty decent. Well, understandable to want to get the bishop out, but it's not really doing much more here than it was doing there, so perhaps thwarting black's plans would have been in order. So b5, rook a to e1, and pawn takes pawn. And he didn't bishop takes pawn here. He could have, and he likely will later. But instead he says, I don't like your queen. Get out of there. And so black complies. And now bishop takes c4. Just a little bit of an in-between move before capturing the pawn. But, some might contend the queen really can't do much from here. Just leave it alone. And just go ahead and take this. And why take an extra move to help the queen get back into the game, right? <clears throat> well, that's what was played, nonetheless. Now bishop to b5. And queen defends. And now rook f to b8. It's a nice little idea here um, to illustrate how these grandmasters use their moves. Instead of consuming a move, capturing, and a lot of us would just capture here. The problem is now you've got this open file, you got this pawn under attack. And even though you've improved your, your, um, uh, excuse me, black has improved his pawns to boot. That's, let me come back to where I wanted to go. So resist the urge to automatically trade, I guess is what I'm getting at. And even if you wanted, are willing to trade pieces, why, why burn off a move doing it? And so here the queen says, okay, if you want to trade bishops, you're going to have to be the one to spend a move to initiate that. Black or white not willing to open the file and improve his opponent's position. All right. Coffee consumed. So rook f to uh, b8, h3, 
keeps any ideas of pushing or advancing. Queen b7, a bishop back to c1, very unfortunate bishop. <laughs> Neither of his bishops are that great, even though he has the bishop pair. He's boxed in by his pawns here, and he's boxed out by black's pawns here. Well, now bishop takes, queen takes, and black didn't mind burning a move for that because he's got this nice strong battery on the open file. Queen b5, queen retreats, queens are traded, and now black is going to take advantage of that open line. King f2, rooks are doubled, king e3 trying to get his king toward the center, as uh, that's where the king likes to be in the end game. Rook from b8 to b5, king to d3, making his way on over. Rook to c2, preparing a super attack against the a pawn. Rook to c2, and pawn to c4 check. And I'm not real clear on why that move and I'm not real clear on why not just take it so I'm gathering the point of c5 is simply to create a place for his knight well why would he do that because this can just be taken now and perhaps that's why he didn't take it he didn't want the knight coming in Okay, that answers that question. I guess I'm a little bit still asleep, huh? It's like the other day when I played two moves to, to threaten checkmate. And I had checkmate in one. <laughs> hey, let me get my knight. Let me get my knight over here so I can attack this pawn. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I guess the knight would just take the pawn here. Creating a passed pawn. He must not have liked that idea. So he played king e3. Alright, so I answered both of my questions. It just took a little bit of a look. Doubled rooks here. Oh! Oh, 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 it's bad enough to, to miss a mate in one when you win the game and you realize, oh, I could have won it six years ago. But when you miss a mate in one and then end up losing, that really hurts. That hurts. That's the type of, that's the type of idiocy that when I do it, I just get so angry with myself. I just get so infuriated. That I missed such an obvious. So the knight's probably wanting to land on e3. Is what I'm guessing his idea is with knight h5. King d2, yes. Alright, so this also attacks the g-man. So he defended it. He could have also played g3, but that would have given that up, I suppose. And sure enough, now we have three attackers... And we do have three defenders. So, no for power. But now white's pieces are going to be completely tied up. So at this point, white can only dance and try to hold out for a drawer. In the meantime, the black king will make his way into white territory... Well, I guess he can't go there. That's off limits. How does the black king make ground? Well, what he'll do is he'll... Once he gets his king into position, he'll then trade everything off. Takes, 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 takes. And then move his king in. 
That would make sense. So let's see. Yep. 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 Okay, he's moving the pawn up. Okay, he changed his mind. He's going to come here. Ooh! Ooh, luscious. This was luscious. Create two passed pawns. Two connected passed pawns. Let's back this up. This was a nice idea. You see, this is why these guys are grandmasters. My plan would have been get your king up to a4. A4. Sorry, get your king up. I can't go there. Sorry. Get your king up to a4. Then trade everything off and then play here. The problem is then the king is going to be on c1 and can defend here anyway. But this beautiful sack. This is just so lovely. Because now you have two connected pass pawns. Oh, this was from the uh, 1977-78 Hastings. Round 14. Oh, I meant to show the other game first. Uh, I wanted to show them in chronological order. And I wanted to show a game that he played before he was titled. Where he beat um, world champion Botvinnik. Uh, I'll show that next. I, I'm batting out of order here. Uh, but, yeah, what a lovely... So this was uh, played on January 12th, 1978, Tundra Mike. Just a lovely idea here. Because, remember, remember what I've taught before. Uh, yeah, I think he is still active. Um, one of my favorite guys, just because of his name. I never met him or anything, or even heard him or seen him. But when I was a little kid, when when he became a grandmaster, I'd been playing chess for about three years or so, and uh, so I was about twelve years old when he became a GM. And um, I just loved the name Tarzan because it sounded like Tarzan. <laughs> And any time I'd see a game in Chess Life with his name, I'd go, Oh! <laughs> uh, and I'd beat my chest. Uh, oh. But I always, I just, I always just wanted to root for him because he was an American. Nice. So this was just gorgeous. Pin the rook. Uh, I reckon... That's clever. I, 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 guess, can't, I guess that's better than just playing a4, isn't it? And now a4 is played... Nice, nice, and that's where he resigned. Wow, this was just so lovely. This was just so wonderful. Really good game by uh, Roman Jijikashvili. Um, I just want to go back to that beautiful... Um, Sacrifice. What move number was it? Where he played this. Knight B3. Just lovely idea. Uh, and I started to say, don't forget that when a pawn crosses the equator, it's no longer worth one point. It's now worth two points. And each time it advances a rank thereafter, it gains two points. So this is now worth two points, but now it's worth four points. So this pawn, in other words, is worth more than this knight. A pawn on b3 is worth more than a knight, especially when it's connected with another passed pawn. That may even make it even more valuable. <clears throat> Might make it worth 
you know, five points. When you have connected past pawns, it's just, they're, they're just, their value just goes up immensely. So, I would say those two pawns, this, this is it worth at least, at least five points. It's probably worth the whole rook. Given the fact that you have another pawn coming behind it. 